Thanks everyone for joining. I'm very happy to see you here. Uh, I hope you had a good lunch. My name is Katrin, Katrin Wellmann from Germany, uh, from Cologne. And I'm, as you can see with Accenture, I'm a senior manager there. And basically what I'm more identify with is being an agile coach. Um, I've been accompanying, supporting, uh, lean agile transformation since around a decade now. Originally, I'm from physical product development. I studied product development in the early days. And um, yeah, knowing that tools, frameworks, it's all well, uh, it's great. I'm a PST, professional scrum trainer with scrum.org. But I noticed I need more in my toolbox, not just framework knowledge. So I became a systemic coach and change man manager. And um, that is all that I'm going to say about myself. Now I would love to know something about you. So who in here would consider themselves or identifies as leader? Who in here is a leader? Get up, please. Stand up, because I know you still need to process that food. <laughs> cool. Wow. Lots of leaders in here. Thank you very much. You can sit back down. Who in here? is some sort of coach, Agile coach, Scrum Master. Great. And I love that it's partly the same people getting up. Love it. Thank you very much. Who in here has either supported or initiated any kind of transformation, organizational transformation, Agile transformation? Oh, wow. <laughs> Almost all of you. And I suppose the other ones who didn't get up now, they are thinking about it, uh, are here to get informed about it. So you will start doing that soon. Okay, so why I'm here is today to support you in your endeavors. I know organizational change, agile transformation, wow, it's one of the hardest things in life you can set out to do. It's the most fun and uh, you need a lot of patience, but um, it can drive you nuts sometimes. So I want to give you something very, very simple to use, e exceptionally simple, uh, to use in any kind of context that uh, requires development, transformation, change. And um, this simple thing is an Agile kata. So, who of you is old enough, like me, to remember Karate Kid? Yeah, again, oh wow, I love it. <laughs> uh, I was so in love with Karate Kid. I'm, I'm, I, he was just so cute. But what impressed me most, uh, thinking back on it, was uh, how the Karate Master went about teaching him. You remember maybe Karate Kid came to him and said, I want to learn Karate. And he said, okay, I'll take you on as a pupil. Now go wash my car. And he was like, what? Okay, I'll wash the car because then he will teach me. So he had to wax on, wax off. I don't know if you remember, wax on, wax off. <laughs> Did that for many days and complained and uh, really got annoyed by it. And finally, he, he went up to his master and said, I'm not going to wash your car anymore. Waxing on, waxing off, it will not help me. I'm here to learn karate. And as, at least that's how I recall it. The master attacks him and he just does the movement to defend himself. So the movement of washing the car had been translated. It had become part of him. It was unconsciously part of his practice. And that worked very well in defending himself. So that's what a kata is. A kata involves deliberate, repetitive practice um, to master a form. And Karate Kid, he mastered waxing on, waxing off, which coincidentally was also karate already. Okay, okay, we don't have to delve deeper into this. But um, that's what I'm here to propose to you, to practice this waxing on, waxing off, so you can then really just internalize it, you, your organization, your teams. And it's, it's just easy, it comes naturally. So 
the goal is to increase business agility, to really create an agile culture, because that's what we're trying to do when we learn new stuff, creating new behaviors, which when they come naturally, they build a culture. And by that, of course, drive organizational change. Now, I asked you how many of you have been part of uh, Agile Transformations or are currently part of it. And I would be really interested, maybe we can share some stories later, in how you started them. I just know maybe it wasn't even you who started, but you came in later in the game and found things had already been set up to change. Like, this happened to me many times in the last decades. I would be engaged as an Agile consultant, coach, trainer, and come in and they would say, oh yeah, we've decided already, we're going to do SAFE and uh, we're just building up this and that now, so can you please join us and teach us how to do it? I have to admit, I'm a, I am an SPC, I'm able to teach SAFE, but uh, I would much rather start a few steps further back. Maybe there's better ways to drive Agile transformations. So, I would be really interested, how did you do it? Were you getting really people engaged? Were you really driving it in an agile manner? Because my experience is people conduct agile transformations as if they were doing a waterfall change. First, we're going to implement new roles, then we're going to invite to the events, and we have to set up JIRA for the artifacts, and that's our new operating model. At least that's how I often have it seen. Maybe you had better experience. But how about applying the very values and principles that probably the very most people in this room believe in, or have seen proven as working from the Agile Manifesto, um, how about applying those in the act of driving an agile transformation? Doing the same thing, following these principles, uh, creating transparency, inspecting and adapting, while following the values of putting individuals and interactions first over processes and tools, and so on. How about that? This is what the Agile Kata is intending to do, because at least from our experience, most Agile transformation efforts don't do this uh, in all consequence. They do not follow the Agile principles themselves. They set up an operating model, a framework, which is very well. Nothing against Scrum to be said, but maybe it would be much easier to really drive change if people ask for this kind of um, new role, for example if they first identify there's a need for it, and then we give it to them. And not us coming in and telling them, oh, all you need is roles, events, artifacts. Okay, so we could do that by working with an Agile Kata. And uh, Kata could drive, help us drive an Agile transformation, like I now said, and on an organizational level, really starting um, implementing different ways of working, um, really trying to get the organization ready to be more business agile as well. We could also use it for other organizational improvement, any kind. You will see that it is so simple, it can be used uh, also for individual development. I used it for myself years before I knew the Agile Kata. I will uh, give you an example later. And Agile teams in their um, little realm can use it, either in retrospectives or even in product development. You could identify an improvement to be maybe a missing feature of a product and then use the Agile Kata to get there. So what is the Agile Kata? It comes, this Kata thought comes from Toyota Kata. Mike Rothers uh, conducted uh, research on it 2004 to 2009 on how did Toyota get so successful in their way of working and um, they published a book, he published a book um, that is called Toyota Kata. 
it's still available, you can buy it, read it, and it contains the improvement kata, which leads you through the steps of improvement, and a coaching kata, another form that is mastered by the coach to support the person or the team improving something in these efforts. And um, in Toyota, of course, production, lean production and so on, the coach mostly is the manager, the managing person, maybe the direct manager of the person being coached. We here in this room might often work in agile coach functions without being the, the manager of the person we're coaching or the team. So the very basis of the Toyota Kata is to really look at these steps. We first of all want to understand the direction or the challenge that we're aiming for. And it's not a vision. You need a vision first. Okay, you define your vision and then this next challenge or this direction takes you one step further towards your vision. Okay, so that's what you need to know first. It could be, okay, we want to be um, have a whole unit, uh, yeah, business unit working in an agile way. We want to be more business agile than we are today. It could be something, of course, as fan of evidence-based management, I would say, okay, give some data. <laughs> what is the concrete direction? Put it in there. How do you define being business agile? That is the very first step. So we start at the end. We look from the vision, okay, what is the challenge that brings us a bit closer to the vision? And then, and I think here's a little USP, and the whole thing, it's so simple, it's really common sense, as you might notice now. Um, but this is a USP for me because that's often what we forget. Grasp the current condition. What is now? What do you already have? that can help you in going into that direction? And what are obstacles that you already see that are there? So again, measurement here will help us. So um, if we look at a team and they're not very productive, we could look at, okay, how can we um, define, how can we measure what they're currently uh, delivering in, with regards to value? What is their outcome currently? and uh, then what, what is our next target condition. Because that is step three, establish the next target condition. So usually the general direction or challenge is hard to get to in one leap. It's, it's too complex, it's too much. So let's you know, cut it down a bit. Okay, let's look at what is achievable as next target. What can I imagine as next target? And then we do the work. Then Step four is experimenting towards that target. It's really doing little steps. And sometimes these steps go straight and sometimes they go sideways and sometimes you do a little detour or walk in a circle and sometimes you have to go back and do another experiment. But over time, with enough experimenting, you will arrive at the next target condition. And this, of course, uh, you knowing Agile, we don't do once, we do it again and again, we reflect on what is our current challenge? What is the most challenging? For example, when you're entering an organization and they want to do an agile transformation, maybe the very first challenge could be identify why we want this change or identify who will drive that change with us. Who are the change agents? Who are the sponsors of the change? Get them to form a team maybe and then Identify, okay, what is now? People are not talking to each other uh, across departments. So it's a real challenge getting them to build a team. So um, grasping the current condition is very important. And be honest, be transparent, be very clear about it. And then find uh, the next target condition. Wouldn't it be nice maybe if they got together at least once and worked together on the vision and uh, that could be the next target condition. And then experiment towards it. Maybe you have to have some coffee, um, coffee kitchen talks with them. You need to uh, have a training with them. 
maybe you need to talk to them individually or have the leader, their leader talk to them. I don't know what experiments could be. This is just one example, but we keep repeating this. And that is already stated by the Toyota Kata. Now, what is the difference when it comes to the Agile Kata? And Joe Krebs, the one who created the, the graphic you just saw, Joe Krebs came up with the idea to combine the Toyota Kata and the Agile Manifesto and said, what if we really take the Agile Manifesto, its values and its principles that we all stand for, and combine it when we are doing our Toyota Kata, when we're doing our improvement Kata, when we keep really the principles in mind, we can use them to measure the current condition. Okay, one of the principles says uh, teams regularly uh, reflect on what they're doing. So are people doing retrospectives? That would be kind of an output measure. So I would rather recommend maybe an outcome-based measurement like um, how many adaptions do they do after their retrospectives? How often do they really come up with something valuable to change? So this is really, I said it was simple, it was common sense. This is really it. And now you start doing that, you can start doing that at any point. It's already a running organizational transformation, no problem. It's a team that is struggling, it's a team newly founded. It's uh, you're planning an agile transformation from the very scratch. Start with a kata that is easy. And leadership and coaching should be something that is inbuilt. So the kata, it um, recommends 20 minutes daily. Could be with a team, could be with an individual. Maybe that seems a lot to you now. 20 minutes daily, just talking about what improvements? These would be the questions we would ask. What is the target condition you're currently looking at? What is the actual condition now? So that might not even change so often, might not even change on a daily basis, but you run experiments the whole time. So maybe you want to get clarity again. What one obstacle was it you're addressing currently? And when you ran an experiment yesterday, what did you plan? What did you have in mind when you ran that experiment? And then what did you expect to happen? What actually happened? So document your experiment. What did you learn from that? And then come back to the main questions. What do you expect now from your next step? And how quickly can we see, will we see, that there is an improvement happening. How quick we, will we be measure, able to measure the improvement? So it might seem much to you to ask this every day, to do this little conversation between a coach or any kind of leader with the pe people in the team or a group of leadership or an individual to lead that conversation. But remember, Karate Kid, he was only good in defending himself because of the wax on, wax off daily car washing exercise. So we do get better. I would like you to get up again and ask you to cross your arms. Just get up, please. And invite you to cross your arms in the usual manner how you're used to it. Okay, everyone does it quite automatically. And now, please, cross them the other way. It feels awkward, kind of, yeah? And you need to think about it, and it still feels awkward. Now, if you were to practice that every day, it wouldn't feel so awkward anymore. And this is something that we say about, thanks again, you can sit down. Thank you very much for, for playing with me. I, I hope to you know, get you out of the food stupor as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is something that uh, will become from this unconscious movement, you just do it, you know how to do it, to deliberately doing it a different way, and then that can become unconscious again because it gets ingrained, it gets inbuilt into your body like any practice, any kata will. So this is it already. It's really, really quite simple because organizations or institutions also heard this morning we heard that they don't solve the problems. People do. 
you do, you as leaders, as agile coaches, as scrum masters, as product owners, product managers, you solve the problems with your teams, of course, teams delivering value. So I'm asking you to really think about a simple approach. You don't need a huge framework set up first or uh, extra roles set up first before you can start with this. Just, just start it. And you will see, by doing that, you're following Agile principles. By doing that and making it a habit in your surroundings, you are creating an Agile culture. And finally, of course, culture, that's the change we want to see. A more open, more collaborative, more cross-functional cross way of working. So you will be driving organizational change by that. And it could start today. I mean, I prepared something. Um, I'm having a workshop in the other room at 3.10, and whoever can or wants to attend, we're going to practice just that. And I used it myself when I was planning on becoming a PST, a professional scrum trainer, because I was so smart. I did it at the same time as trying to do my systemic change. <laughs> Um, uh, systemic coaching and change management uh, certification. Both took around one and a half to two years. And also I had two small children, I was working full time, so I was like, I went crazy in my mind. I couldn't handle it. So I used an Agile Kata to just get sorted. I started here, I said, okay, I called it my state of awesomeness. It was my direction, my challenge. And I said, okay, I want to be a PST, the first female PST in Europe to enter via the product ownership uh, path. And also I want more in my toolbox, I want systemic uh, coaching tools. So I put that here and then I looked at, okay, what do I have now? <laughs> okay, I have a PSM1, that's great. I have the right questions in my mind. I have little time, I, I put this here. So there was already something I had and some obstacles like little time. And then I said, okay, what could be my very next target? And at the beginning, that was things like, okay, do my PSM2. <laughs> or um, know, be inscribed or su subscribe to a, a class of systemic coaching. And then I started with my little experiments on how I could learn, how I could um, you know, get into a class, how I could pay for that. I just had lots of stickies here, <laughs> lots of post-its. And over time, I checked them off, and my experiments were success successful most of the time. And then I could put them here and say, okay, that's my now. I have that in my pocket now. Okay, what's next? This stayed the same for a long, long time. This changed regularly, and this I was working with daily. But overall, it didn't have a fixed time box, like a sprint time box or anything. It was just my tool. And you can do it with any challenge. Personal, individual one, of course, that's maybe even easier because you're the master of that. But also for your organization, for your team. You can write the challenge you're, you're pursuing on top. You can, you know, make it nice looking so you like working with it. You can put it on a mural or a mirror. It doesn't have to be analog. I'm an analog kind of woman still. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to do in the workshop if you want to join. And uh, if, if you don't want to try it today, just keep it in mind. It's there. Uh, it's free. The Agile Kata white paper that Joe Krebs wrote, it's free on agilekata.org. You can just download it, read it, practice it. And of course, this is uh, Joe Krebs logo. And of course, you can also uh, get yourself certified as Agile Kata trainer if you're interested, or just, you know, look at what Agile Kata has to offer. This is him, by the way, in the background. Sorry for the, the only picture I could find with him. And that's about it. Thank you for your curiosity, for your attention, for your focus. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn and uh, listen to Agile Amped podcast I did with Joe Krebs. Um, that's on Spotify and, and so on. So thank you very much.